formulas and theorems and things throughout the whole module, it can become quite a bit. And this is stuff that you want to know pretty well for those, most of you taking the ACT, SAT next year. It's a pretty big element to that test you know, on the math sections, all this geometry stuff. So what I'm going to start with, while you guys have page 39 done, I just want to do a little review because we're going to add a number of new things today. So just kind of hit on these things as a little refresher over the weekend. What we talked about on Friday is what was called a straight angle. That was number three. Uh oh, what just happened there? And a straight angle is if I have a straight line, what we talked about is the degree measure of any line. So if I took this point and this point and asked, all right, what degree measure does this have? It's always 180 degrees. It's kind of based off this idea, too, that if we have two lines that are perpendicular to each other, we all know this is a 90 degree angle. But doesn't that other side have to be a 90 degree angle? So these two guys together would have to add up and equal a 180 degree angle. So straight lines always have 180 degrees. We talked about supplementary angles. Those are going to pop up throughout the angle measure. Oops, got that backwards. Uh, basically, what supplementary angles are, if I do the measure of one angle and add it to the measure of a second angle, supplementary means they add up to be 180, always. And that's compared to complementary, which is similar in the sense that you're going to be adding two angles up, measure of angle one, measure of angle two, but those are going to add up to be 90 degrees. We talked about naming angles, so when we start talking about an angle, this vertex point has to always be the middle one, and then we can call that A, B, C, or C, B, A. All right, as long as B is in the middle. We talked about being very, very careful if we name an angle with just one variable. In this case, we could, but we'll get into that in a little bit more detail as you move along. And then I want you to add something to seven if you have a little bit of room. We did this on Friday. What we called this was a segment. So this is a segment, and I asked you to name this, and we named this YZ, and we put this little bar over the top. And we talked about how do not put arrows over those. We said we could do ZY as well, but that's how you name a segment. And if you have some space down here, because we don't really define these, and we're going to start using these words today in the next section as we begin. But next to that, if you have some room, write the word ray. And then what I want you to draw for a ray, so look how this is going to be similar to the one that we just did. The one that we did on Friday, you had two dots so that we have a distinct starting point and a clear ending point. Go ahead and start this with a dot. Label this Y, just like the previous one. Go ahead and draw this out. But instead now, I want you to put an arrow at the end. Before the arrow, put the dot and a Z. So a segment has a starting point and an ending point. We don't carry on to the left or the right. A ray has a starting point. It does not have an ending point. So we would start here and it would go on forever. Okay. The way we name that, go ahead underneath this, put YZ. Again, comparing this to the previous one where we put dots on the end, you're going to put a dot over the Y since that's where the terminal, the beginning point is. And then go to Z, but put an arrow. That would be the notation for a ray. So if we ever use the word ray, we're going to use that here in a moment. <laughs> that's what that is. And then the third one, if you have some room there, is go ahead and draw a line, but put arrows on both ends. So again, first one, we don't have any arrows. That's the segment. A ray, we only have one arrow. When we have both arrows, this in geometry is when we can actually use the word line. We don't use the word line for those first two. The way we name this, put a Y and a Z here as well, just so we're naming them all with the same letters. Put your Y and your Z. And a line now, you're going to put the little line above it with arrows on the ends. So what you put above your letters are very, very important. It's how we define these. It's how we name these. And we're going to start using these other words today as well. So I just wanted to throw those in there. All right. So just again, some more of the minutia that happens in geometry, little things that add up to be a lot of things by the time we get through a, a unit on this stuff. All right. So if we go to the next chapter, the next page, we're going to continue to add this. This one you may know. I don't know if you talk about this at all. You do do a little bit of geometry in junior high, um, but this is a nice easy one. It says the triangle. So if we're dealing with the triangle, so if you look at example one, example two, you'll see triangles there. Angles, notice how every triangle has three angles. Here's one angle, 
here's two angles, here's three angles. So that's what we're talking about, the triangle's angles. We all know what the word sum means. You're going to add them up. And then our theorem is this is guaranteed to be true. And what that theorem just says is the sum of the measures of all three angles of a triangle will always be 180 degrees. So when I add up the three angles inside of a triangle, they should always add up to be 180. All right. So that hopefully is pretty simple. So if I ask you number one to find the measure of angle one, there's a couple different little ways you could do it. If we do it the fancy math teacher algebra way, we can set up an equation. 35 degrees plus 65 degrees plus the measure of angle one better add up to be 180. That's the whole theorem. All three angles have to add up to be 180. Then you just solve this like we would a normal equation. Combine your like terms. So we have 100 degrees between those two angles. Subtract that 100 degrees over, and we find the measure of angle one would have to be 80 degrees. That's me being fancy with an equation. Most people, as you do more and more of these, will just understand. I could really just do 180 and then just right away get rid of the 35 and get rid of the 65. Whatever remains has to be angle one. It's really up to you. There's going to be a lot of different options for you to solve a lot of these problems. As long as you're confident with it and you can execute it correctly and get the right answer, it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay. Example two. Uh, do this a little bit in math one. Probably talk about a little bit in geometry. Whenever you see this notation here where you see the little square drawn in a corner, although you guys in here, that's really, there we go. You get this little square drawn in a corner. What we want to know is that's indicating that this is a right angle and a right angle is 90 degrees. So whenever we see that, just know that that's always a 90 degree angle. Probably already knew that, but if not, just make a notation. Make, you're going to see that plenty. Using that same exact idea now, 31, the angle 31, plus the angle 90 degrees, plus this angle here, because now if I want you to solve for X and this missing angle, this angle, all three of those things added up better equal 180 degrees, always. The angles inside of a triangle always add up to be 180. Solve this equation. So notice how you have a like term here, here, and then here. Oh, that's a minus of one though. Let me fix that. So add up all your like terms on the left. So if I did 31 and 90 is 121, but then 121 take away the one is 120. And then that equals 180. Subtract 120 from both sides. to get 60, divide, and then x would equal a 20. One of the things you're going to want to be really, really careful of when we get to quizzes and tests, make sure you answer your question. What we just did is this part of it. We solved for x, but the question was also asking you find the missing angle. So the missing angle was this guy right here. It was defined initially as 3x minus 1. I can now actually find this angle because now I can go ahead and say 3, and then instead of an x minus a 1, don't we now know what our x is? The x we just solved for was 20. So this gives you 60 minus a 1. The missing angle had a degree measure of 59 degrees. So when it's multiple choice, fill in the blank, know what you're asked, what I'm asking for. As Kuba was asked for, are you looking for X? Are you looking for your angle? And make sure you provide us with the correct one, all right? Because the X is not always the final answer that we're looking for. But in the big picture, it's easy, but there's just a lot of different ways we can approach this. And that is simply the three angles of a triangle add up to be 180, all right? Next thing, uh, a linear pair. So if we think, break this down a little bit, the word linear has that word line in it. So that's the reason we call it a linear. And then a pair means two. So we have two and then adjacent. Adjacent means next to. So whoever you, when you sit on the couch next to your parents, you're adjacent to them. If you're in school and a desk, whoever you're sitting next to, you are adjacent to them. So if we have two people sitting next to each other, that's kind of what we're thinking of with angles. So if you look, notice how angle four is right next to angle five. Those are two adjacent angles. And they are a linear pair because not only are they next to each other, but when we look at them together, 
don't those guys together form a nice straight line? So that's why they're called a linear pair. Two angles that are next to each other that form a straight line. And then if you recall, what I started the period with is a little review from Friday. Remember how the measure of a straight line is always 180 degrees? Always. So if these two angles together make up the straight line, then what that means is their sum has to be 180 degrees. So two adjacent angles along a, that make a straight line are always 180. So in this case, we would say angle 4 plus angle 5 must have a sum of 180 degrees. That's a linear pair. Okay. All right, this one, probably the most random of them. Those previous two, I think most people remember pretty nicely. But this one is now an exterior angle of a triangle. So if we look at our triangle here, uh, do this for me just so we can talk about it. Call this angle four. So if we look at our triangle right now, here's the triangle. Angle one, angle two, and angle four are the angles inside of that triangle. So that's what the whole idea of interior means. So we have three angles inside. What an exterior angle is, so I have that highlighted over here or written over here. It's the angle that's not inside of your triangle, so that's why it's exterior. But it is a linear pair with one of the angles that is an angle inside of our triangle. So that's why angle 3 is a linear pair or is an exterior angle. It's outside and it makes a linear pair with the other inside. Okay, so that's an exterior angle. Interior we understand, hopefully. A remote interior just means the remote interior angles, if this is our exterior, what I have hanging out here in blue, then the angles on the opposite side of that, far away from it, the one that don't make our linear pair, so in this case, angle one and angle two, those are our interior, remote interior. And the reason we want to know those is because the exterior angle theorem says that the measure of your exterior angle so write angle three in this case. So the measure of angle three is equal to, so we put our equal sign, the sum, so plus, the measures of the remote interior angles. So angle one and angle two, if we add those up, we'll always have the de same degree measure as our exterior angle, okay? All right, so now with all of that, let's do this one. I didn't get that. Could oh. you try again? <laughs> Sorry, Siri. Siri started talking to me on my watch. Sorry, guys. I don't know why she did that. Um, so if I want the measure of angle one, notice how angle one is the exterior angle. It's not in the triangle, and it borders this angle here to make a linear pair. So the other two angles, the 40 and the 70, our theorem would tell us that the measure of angle one has to equal the sum of the two angles that do not share that line. So that would, in this case, be 40 degrees and 30 degrees. So pretty quickly, the measure of angle one is simply 70 degrees. Number four, the similar idea that if this is our exterior angle, then what that means is the exterior angle of 113 should equal the sum of those remote interior angles. So that would be 70 degrees plus the measure of angle 2. 70 and 2 should add up to be 113. Subtract. These will cancel. That's what, 43? That has to be the measure of angle 2. Now, let's kind of show why this works. So I'm going to do a big or. And let's approach it this way. Isn't this a straight line right here? So if we go back to the idea of a linear pair, shouldn't 113, and then if I ask you what this has to be, then this has to add up with 113 to be 180 degrees. So a line is always 180 degrees. So if I said that this has to be 63 degrees, because doesn't, they're not 63, 67 degrees. There we go. 
67 and 113, if we add those, that's going to add up to be 180, which is what a linear pair always does. Couldn't we now just figure out angle 2 by doing 180 minus 70 minus 67? Oops. And then that will also give us the 43 degrees. All right. So different routes, different ways we can kind of approach this. And, and really, it doesn't matter to us which way you choose when it's something like this. Okay. All right. So now number five, we're going to put some things together here. Actually, I want you to kind of think this through because this is where this gets a little bit harder. Not that this one is real, real hard, but you got to be really systematic with this. this is why I really like the geometry units and the geometry topics because it really forces you to think a little bit. It forces you to be systematic in what you're going to do when you problem solve this. Find X, find Y, find Z, and see if we can get all three of those angles real quick. Using the stuff that we've talked about today and then what we did on Friday. Okay, next results here. I'll give you another 30 seconds to see how we're doing. I think a lot of us are getting X and then we're having a hard time moving over to the other triangle. All right, let's see where we're at. So, um, again, we really have to... There's a couple different routes we could take, but you need to know one. And then once you know one, you can kind of start dominoes in terms of getting the next and then the next. So there's a couple different routes we could take. I think probably the easiest is to understand that if I look at this triangle here, just this one, because we have really three triangles, the two small ones and then the one big one. If we added the two triangles up. If we just look at that guy, don't these angles all have to add up to be 180 degrees? So with that in mind, is again, how you're going to set these up is up to you. But we really just take the total amount of 180, and then let's just get rid of the two that we know. So the 65 minus the 39. Whatever remains, that has to be the measure of angle X. You can set this up as an equation if you want. That 65 plus 39 plus X has to equal 180. Those are both very much the same exact idea. Whichever one is easiest for you to see and work with is totally fine with us. All right. So when we do that, anybody in here get come on, you had it, then you what'd you get? You didn't? I thought you had it. Anybody in here get that? Confidently. Brooke. Anybody? Nobody has their calculators. All right. When we do that, that should be what, seventy-six? So this should end up being seventy-six degrees. Then if we know that's 76 degrees, now what we're going to rely on is, and again, I'll show you these because it's not as easy to see when they're all jumbled up and mixed together. But the next one we're going to use is this idea right here, <clears throat> that if I have a straight line, then the two angles that make up that straight line are called a linear pair <clears throat> and they're supplementary. They have to add up to be a 180. So if we go back to the diagram we're looking at, here's this straight line right here. So don't this angle and Y together have to add up to be 180 degrees. So again, you can set up an equation if you want. You can do 76 plus Y equals 180. <clears throat> 
or just take 180, that's what you're going to do anyway in the next step, subtract 76 from both sides, show that. And then y should end up equaling 104 degrees. Once we know that one, these guys, now let's focus on, although what just happened there, let's just focus on this other triangle. Don't all three of those have to add up to be 180? So now 21 plus 104 plus Z better add up to be 180 degrees. Or just do 180 minus those. So again, up to you, it's at 125 plus Z equals 180. Subtract 125 from 180 and we get what? 55 degrees. They're like little puzzles. You gotta have the one piece to get to the next piece, so on and so forth. And all of these different little theorems pop up. That's why by themselves, super easy. And when they get a little more involved, you got to be able to think a little bit with these. Okay. All right, next one. What this one is now getting at, this is our exterior angle theorem. So here's my triangle. So pretty clearly, this is our exterior angle. Also, I should probably read these directions to make sure we do this correctly. Because not only do we want to solve for x, once we know what x is, you're going to find the measure of each angle. But the first thing we need to do is figure out what x is. So this is our exterior angle. So what our theorem tells us is the exterior angle of 4x plus 8 should equal the sum of those opposite two interior angles. So we should be adding up 51 and then the 2x plus a3. So we do our 2x plus a3 plus our 51. That equation there, solve it, that should give us our x. So a lot of little algebra here as well. So we got to be pretty good at solving equations. So combine your like terms on the right-hand side. Uh, I'm going to subtract this 2x over. So that we get 2x plus 8 equals 54. Subtract your 8. Ah, come on. So 2x would equal 46. So for the value of x, we get 23, not your final answer. And it's really easy to, on a quiz or a test, and then just jump to the next problem because you obviously just did some good work. You just got an answer, but we're not finished yet. Not only do we want the x, like I have highlighted, we want the measure of each angle. So now I want to know what is this degree measure if we now know that our x is 23. So we come to this angle, and we want to do 4 times x, which we now know is 23, and then plus 8. That's 92 plus 8, so this degree measure is 100 degrees. So that's the angle measure of that angle. If I want the measure of this missing angle, I'm now going to do 2 times x, which again is 23. Add our 3 over. That's 46 plus 3, and then that's 49 degrees. All right. Last little thing here. Vertical angles. It uses the word rays. So the reason we're going to get a ray is notice how these two lines intersect. Put a dot where those guys intersect. And notice how we now get four different rays. We get ray that extends in this direction, then it goes to the bottom right, and then we go here, we form right there. When we have two lines that intersect, which is what's happening, two lines are intersecting, notice how we create four different angles. Notice how some of them are opposite angles, and by opposite we means they're directly across from each other. So in this case, a vertical angle are angles that are opposite of each other when we have two lines that intersect. So in this case, angle one is a vertical angle to angle three. So if I ask you what are the vertical angles, those are the angles that are opposite of each other when we have our two lines intersect. So we would say angle one and 
angle three are one set of vertical angles. However, isn't there another set of angles that are opposite of each other? Angle two is opposite of angle four. They're across from each other. So angle two and angle four are also what we would call vertical angles. Below that is what we now want to know about vertical angles. Not only what are they, how do we find them, but we also want to understand vertical angles are always congruent. So if I made up a number here, let's say angle one I tell you is 35 degrees, then angle three better be 35 degrees as well. So vertical angles always have the same degree measure, and they're opposite of each other when we form two, four, two lines intersect forming those four angles. So quick little problem with that idea now. If this is our graph, notice how we have these lines intersecting right here, and they form four different angles. Angle K, the unnamed angle, and then 5 and 6. What I want you to do is find angle 5 and find angle PKU. Before we can do that, we're going to have to figure out what X is. So if we look, here's angle 5, here is angle 6. Notice how they're opposite of each other. Those are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. So that would then mean that 2x plus 7 would have to be equivalent to x plus 25. Those have the same degree measure. Those have to be equal in terms of their degree measure. That's our equation. You're going to solve this real quick. So subtract x from both sides. Subtract that 7 from both sides, and what we find is that x equals 18. Notice I'm not asking for x, so we're not done. We now just have to use x to answer these two questions. So if I now want angle 5, so let's go to angle 5. Here's how we defined angle 5. It's just 2x plus a 7. So underneath, I'm going to do 2 times x, which I now know is 18, plus 7. This ends up being 36 plus 7, so angle 5 is 43 degrees. So now I can come over here, and I can call angle 5 or say that angle 5 is a 43 degree angle. Then, just do this real quick. I don't want you to necessarily mark anything, but see if you understand what angle this is. Read that and see if you understand what that's looking for. Kind of the first time you've had to look at an angle and identify what this means. <clears throat> when they're put in that order, that's sort of like a little road map. You start at P, and then you're going to go to K, and then you're going to go to U. And then you should see an angle there. That's the angle that we want. So but you don't necessarily have to mark anything, but for me, I've, here's P. I'm going to go to K, and then I'm going to go to U. So the angle that we're looking for that's created by those three dots is right here. That's the angle that I want you to find. The way we can do that, notice how we have a line right here. Doesn't a line always have a linear pair that add up to be 180 degrees? So if you just look at the red line, let me get rid of all the other stuff here. Just look at my red line. Doesn't 43 and then the angle that we're looking for right here have to add up to be 180 degrees. That's what would complete the entire line right there. So if I ask for this angle here, it would have to, it's up to you. You could just do the 180 minus 43. That's what most people eventually get to. You don't have to set up an equation for all of these. That difference has to be what's left over right here. So 180 minus that 43 degree angle is what, 137? So this has to be a 137 degree angle so that they add up to be 180. Okay. <clears throat> And those are our theorems for today. So real quick, go to the next page, see if we can do a few of these. Do numbers one and two. If we can't do these, that's really bad to walk out of here today. So go to the next page, answer one and two.
All right, let's go ahead and do these. This is just our first little theorem we talked about today. Inside of a triangle, those have to add up to be 180. So whether you're just going to add them all up, set it equal to 180, that's our thought process. Or you can just really do 180. Let's subtract away the angles that we know. Whatever that difference is should be our final answer. All right, so what is that? 75? Is that what we get? Let me confirm that. Hopefully. I think that's 75, doing that real quick in my head. Same thing here, here's our triangle. So if I just have 180 total, let's subtract away the two that we already know. The remaining angle has to be angle X. All right, so what is that, 117, so 63 degrees for that one, <coughs> okay? We found out first period that I duplicated three and four, so we don't have to worry about those. We've already done those. And then actually, you know, we only got one of these done, and I don't think we have time to do one of them in this period. So here's what you're going to do. You do have homework tonight. So you're going to do pages, the next two pages, page 41 to 42. You're doing one through, I realize there's a little extra there, one through seven only. So there's a couple extra problems there that start tomorrow's work. So just the next two pages, you're going to do one through seven. If you don't have the packet, I have it on Canvas underneath the assignments tab. Just click on the assignments. Um, we Today's day. Tomorrow's date is February 9th. That's where you'll find your assignment if you need to print it or look off of one online. All right. That's all I got. Hopefully this will go well. If you have any questions tomorrow, ask, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, have a good night. Bye, Alexis.